Hi, my name is Dr. Harim Jaffer. I am periodontist. Today I will talk about predisposing factors associated with periodontal disease. Please subscribe to my channel HL Talent to get more videos on these subjects. Today we are talking about the iatrogenic factors that are contributing in uh, aggravating the periodontal disease. We know that the main causative factor of periodontal disease is dental plaque or microbial biofilm. And we have another aggravating factor that are uh, associated with increasing, increasing or fastening the progress of the disease, including calculus, which we talked about, iatrogenic factors, designs of removal of partial denture, restorative dentistry procedure, malocclusion, orthodontic therapy, tobacco use, radiation therapy, and etc. So regarding the iatrogenic factors, we have four to five factors. First of all, we should know that the deficiencies in the quality of dental restoration or prosthesis are contributing factors to gingival inflammation and periodontal destruction. Inadequate dental procedure that contribute to the deterioration of the periodontal tissue refer to the iatrogenic factors. So iatrogenic factors are faults done by the dentist procedures. It is done by our hands. Iatrogenic endodontic complications that can adversely affect the periodontium include root perforation, vertical root fracture, and endodontic failure that may necessitate the tooth extraction. Characteristic of dental restoration and removable partial denture that are important to the maintenance of the periodontal health include the location of the gingival margin for the restoration and the space between the margin of the restoration and the unprepared uh, the, the, the space between the margin of the restoration and the unprepared tooth, also the contour of the restoration, the occlusion, materials used in restoration, the restorative procedure itself, and the design of the removable partial denture. So first of all, we are talking about margins of restoration. Overhang margins of dental restoration contribute to the development of periodontal disease through two ways. It will affect the periodontium adversely through changing the ecology, the types of the bacteria that habitat in subgingivally from more gram positive to more gram negative. And also it affects the accessibility of plug removal. So it makes flossing difficult making the area difficult to be cleaned from the plug, so it will retain the plug continuously. Subgingival margins are associated with large amount of a plug, more severe gingivitis and deeper pocket. Even if we have a high quality restoration, if placed subgingivally, it will increase plug accumulation and lead to gingival inflammation and increase the gingival crevicular fluid. But margins placed at the level of the gingival crest induce less severe inflammation, whereas supragingival margins are associated with a degree of periodontal health similar to that seen with the non-restored interproximal surfaces. Roughness in the subgingival area is considered a major factor or major contributing factor for plug retention. The subgingival margin or the subgingival zone composed of a margin of restoration, the lutein material, and the prepared as well as non prepared tooth surface. Sources of marginal roughness include grooves scratches in the surface of acrylic resin, porcelain, or gold restorations. Separation of the restoration margin and lutein material from the cervical finish line 
expose the rough surface of the prepared tooth. Also, dissolution and disintegration of the lutein material between the preparation and the restoration leave a space and it will lead to inadequate marginal fit of the restoration. So, it's important to, to make sure that your restoration doesn't go subgingivally and it's important when you fix a crown, be aware of the lutein material to be well managed and removed. And also the subgingival materials all should be highly polished and uh, checked for optimal plug removal and accessibility. The second factor includes the contours and open contact. The over contour crown and restoration tend to accumulate plug and possibly prevent the self-cleansing mechanism, which, uh, which, which could be done by lips, tongue, cheeks, Restoration that fail to re-establish adequate interproximal embrasure associated with papillary inflammation and the contoured crown that lack a protective height of contour do not retain much plug as over contoured crown. So the crown that's short is better than it's over contoured. The over contoured one will retain plug more and more. The integrity and location of this proximal contact, along with the contour of the marginal ridge and developmental groove, typically prevent the interproximal food impaction. For example, <clears throat> Food impaction is the forceful wedging of food into the periodontium by occlusal force. For example, we have a, a condition named a plunger cusp. When we have a flattening of the marginal ridge, except of being like that, and dissipating the force alongside the opposite marginal ridge. When we have a flattened marginal ridge, the tips of the cusp will aggregate the forces and uh, by that will push in the food into interproximal area, creating a food impaction. <clears throat> and this condition names plunger cusp, where the cusp tips that wedge into the interproximal space between opposing teeth and cause food impaction. The cusp points should be rounded and shortened or reduced entirely. The distolingual cusp of maxillary molar often are plunger cusps and even adjust, uh, adjacent marginal ridge. Differences in the height of adjacent marginal ridge may cause food impaction and should be corrected by either reducing the height of the comparatively high marginal ridge or increasing the height of the lower one with a restoration. So we should harmonize the opposing teeth uh, especially if we have a, a flattened marginal ridge and a plunger. Another cause, iatrogenic factors, is materials. Restorative materials are usually non-injurious, but with one exception, maybe self-cure acrylic, which may cause injury to the gingiva. Plug that form at the margin of restoration are similar to that on the non-restored teeth. So there is no difference between the ecology. But under surface of pontic should be barely touch the mucosa. As excessive pontic tissue contact or excessive or over contoured pontics lead to inflammation and pseudopocket. Another factor is uh, iatrogenic factor, the removal of partial denture. Usually after removal of partial denture, there will be a high chance of mobility, gingival inflammation, and periodontal pocket. Partial denture worn during day and night favor plug accumulation more than who wear just one shift at day or night. So you should take it out during uh, during the whole day uh, for a few hours uh, 
because it will favor the plug accumulation. Presence of partial denture not only changes the quantity, but also changes the quality of bacteria. That's say changing the ecology of the bacteria, emerging more spirochetial negative organisms. Finally, the restorative procedures. We know that most of us doing veneers, crowns, and we are using birds are very sensitive area and also using traction cores for impression. Bear injuries, rubber dam clumps, and matrix bands have possible potentials for creating injuries. Forceful packing of gingival retraction cord, cord that some dentists are using it or uh, they are uh, pushing it inside forcefully into the sulcus for the impression or uh, for the purpose, especially for impression, may injure the periodontium and they are capable of causing foreign body reaction. Sometimes uh, pieces of the cord will be, uh, uh, will be left under the gingiva and it will act as a, for, as a foreign material. So these are the iatrogenic factors that are associated uh, with the periodontal disease. Uh, uh, in the, mm, in the next lecture, we are talking about the malocclusion and other predisposing factors. Uh, I hope that you enjoy it.